Welcome to Inside Auto Podcast, where we feature everyone and anyone you'd want to talk to in and out of the automotive industry. Ilana Shabta here, host of Inside Auto Podcast, where we interview top dealers, GMs, marketers, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders in and out of the automotive industry. And before we introduce today's guest, this episode is sponsored by fullpath.com. Fullpath is automotive's leading customer data and experience platform. Fullpath enablers, enables dealers to turn their first party data into lifelong customers by unifying siloed data sources and leveraging that data to create exceptional, hyper-personalized customer experiences. To learn more, visit fullpath.com. Today, we have a returning guest, which is super exciting. We have Eric Barbosa. Eric, how are you doing? Doing great. I'm glad to be on see you again yeah you too i'm glad i actually got to meet you at nada even though for it was only 30 seconds but i saw you on the floor and i was able to introduce myself so that was fun yes yes it was like you had a very busy show it's always hectic there yeah so it's always running around talking to vendors catching up manufacturers so yeah it was it was, it was a it was a good day though it was a good day for sure yeah well today you have i mean you've been years in automotive as a leader you uh, drive sales and operational excellence with experience in finance, budget management, and customer service. Uh, we're excited to have you back. You were on the podcast as managing partner at Henson Brand, uh, CDGR Ford Chevrolet, GMC Buick, and now you're at uh, Cavender Automotive Group. Yeah, what's that's your, correct. Yes. What's your official title there? I'm uh, the vice president of variable operations for the organization. Awesome. So I'm sure you're bringing lots of expertise. Tell us about what the move's been like. Uh, hectic, but uh, fun. Uh, obviously, it's in, in a different area. Uh, the previous group I was with, I was in a smaller town, an amazing town, amazing group. Um, but this is a little bit different. Uh, it's eight rooftops, and they're predominantly in the Metroplex, opposed to these smaller areas. Mm -hmm. And all brands. Um, so we have, you know, uh, J uh, Jaguar Land Rover. Um, we have uh, Nissan, GMC, Buick, Ford, Chevy, Cadillac, um, and it's it's a fourth generation company as well. So this is the fourth gen of uh, leadership in the group. So I'm excited about that. Um, and yeah, it's just been it's been different. It's a, it, it, uh, not an easy transition. Yes, I'm sure not. But challenges are are always good. And and one thing that we talked about last time you were on the podcast was just the the focus on social and all the things that you were doing through Facebook. Are you going to be implementing any of that at this new group? Yeah. The, the, the funny thing is that um, that is, that is on our priorities uh, and operational stuff. A lot of people know me from the Facebook stuff, social media, yeah. pushing bills and uh, you know, leading, uh, I think we got to almost 50% uh, female uh uh Yeah. Uh, female employment at our stores. And yeah, I still, those are passions. Um, but I, I'm realizing at this level with, you know, this scope of stores is, is to mentor and train people to do that and me kind of step back and get, get people to do that. But yeah, I'll, I'll still, you know, go in and, and that's the game plan. And we have a bigger, I would say, uh, a bigger stretch. I think we can because of the amount of stores and a lot more employees. Um, but my key thing there is to get people to learn it, get the staff to learn it, embrace it, and then go execute. Yeah, that I mean, that's the best way to do it, especially if you have more stores and it's going to be it's going to take longer to make the impact if you have more ambassadors along the way um, yes. that can be really successful. And and what are the you know, what are the um, differences that you're seeing in the operations of the of the groups, whatever you can share, like what what worked at your previous dealership that might not necessarily work for this group or vice versa? I think both groups you know do things well um just i i think what i'll bring here is um things that i've seen is just you know it's harder to me in the rural like stores smaller stores you, you have i i think you have to grind a little harder uh, yeah got to get traffic in the store so uh for example you know activities have to be extremely high there where here you're kind of used to the traffic so i'm taking the approach of high activity still even here and uh, we're actually transitioning the staff to do that. And we're seeing, you know, we're seeing some good results from it, but that's a culture change. 
So yeah. uh, not saying they didn't they they did anything bad or, or good or whatever. I just it is different because there you you literally if you're not on the phones and you're not you know posting all the time and doing things to drive business, people aren't just pulling off the freeway to go to to, to the store right. to, to get it to the volume we were doing. It was a lot of work here. You're in the middle of you know San Antonio and in, in, in one other store in Dallas, which you know you got millions of people. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, but and then of course you're probably focusing on like the quality of that activity because if you are, you if you have the luxury of people just coming in, then mm-hmm. let's make sure that the actual experience is good so that you can have customers for life, loyal customers that are coming back to your specific brand. Absolutely, and and the good thing is that we have some people aligned with that. Our CEO Rob Cavender, the team Lee Cavender, WB Cavender, and, and Kobe Joiner, who you know. Yes, uh, and he's been yeah. also on the podcast twice. Yes, he, he, bring him up. Strat- you beat me to it. <laughs> the strategy is that yes, he's he's amazing. He's on uh, the VP strategy and marketing, but yeah, you're absolutely right. It's the quality, um, but we do want to start building certain habits, right? Yeah. And those habits to be efficient and productive, especially now. You know, people got used to picking up the phone, and if they if you had it, you sold it. Training, you know, we got to go back to training activities and making oh, yeah. sure all. All these things are done right. So I'm excited about that. And do you see, um, this can also be with your experience at Henson or elsewhere, but are you seeing that brand loyalty in general has gone down? That's what I'm reading about, meaning like it used to be that if your grandfather brought, brought from a specific brand, like that was the brand and that was the dealership that you went to. And now there's just so much competition when it comes to, you know, um, how we shop and how we research and and the space isn't what it used to. Like, do you do you find that brand loyalty is going down? Do you see that um, that might not necessarily influence your specific audience? I don't know. It's just something interesting to me because I'm I'm trying to keep up with it. Yeah. Yes and no. And and I think it also depends on the group. And do you you know some people like to think they have a brand but don't really have a brand. Mm-hmm. And I. Cavenders, they've been in existence for 80 plus years. They do have a brand. It's important to them. And that goes to the culture, which then goes to the consumer. And now it's adapting to that new way of, of shopping. And I think you'll see some initiatives coming from us to make sure that uh, um, we don't get affected as much as by what you're saying, because it does exist. It's out there. Um, but it just depends on on how you go market and, and how you make that customer experience. Right. So uh, yeah. you've got do what your consumer wants, right? And how they want to shop and how they want to communicate. And uh, um, that's extremely important to be aware of. But yeah, I've seen it. And I just, I don't, I think it's in here. And uh, as as long as you have a strategy and a plan to, to do what you're supposed to be doing, I think you can increase your brand, right? You can actually add more and not only keep what you had before. 100%. And then, and then I'd love to know a little bit about EV strategy. If you are focusing on it, um, you know, how is that affecting how you're planning for 2020, the rest of 2023 and 2024, if at all? Um, interested in hearing a little bit about that. Uh, absolutely. Um, it's funny. One of the, our stores here has solar panels everywhere. Uh, we're all EV compliant. Every, every store has uh, charging stations. We just did the, we uh, have a Grande uh, Ford store in San that uh, um, can't get into too much detail, but it's probably going to be one of the biggest Fords in the nation. And we That's signed awesome. up for Elite program. And, and uh, um, yeah, EVs EVs a big deal for us. And look, it's a big deal for the manufacturer. So it's, it's another thing that gives us an opportunity to take care of our consumers. That's the way we look at it. I think that is the exact way to look at it. And I just, I mean, I live over here in Israel, but we just got our first EV and it is, Insane. First of all, I'm a little, I like barely touch it because my husband's obsessed with it. And I'm like, okay, I don't want to <laughs> scratch the car, but he, it's crazy. And we drive it and I literally see the battery. I feel like I'm driving a phone. Like we, we drove 20 minutes and I'm just like, oh, we went down from 53% to 47%. Like I, it is so crazy that to think that we're driving an electric vehicle. Well, think about it. We're programmed that way already. Yeah, I know. We're, we're, but- we're on a, all the time. I know it's in, I mean, it's insane. And I never believed that within 10 years where we'll be 80% EV or whatever that statistic is. And now I do like, there's just no way that we're not going to be, there's not going to be mass adoption in the next five years. I, I think there will be, but I also still think that ISIS is a, a real deal. And we'll still keep, you know, uh, 
uh, combustible engines out there, and, oh, and sure. uh, we just want, we got to have a good mix and and against embrace the future. Yeah, that's what I feel when I'm in that car. I'm just like, wow, this is the future. <laughs> I mean, I'm never going to drive it, but it's the future. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then what is like? I'm actually not in the know when it comes to this, but EV inventory is that problematic or challenging at all? What what is that looking like? It's not that it's problematic. I think we're all getting used to to you know different manufacturers have a different way. They're all different, right? So okay. as long as you're fine and your facilities are up to date, you'll get X amount. Um, uh, the it. production has been a little lower, obviously, with the constraints the last couple of years that we've been dealing with. But uh, I, I I I see that changing here pretty quickly, and uh, I I think that as long as we do the right thing and create awareness around that. Uh, we're going to get the inventory. We're going to be selling them and we're going to turn them. I mean, I just, you know, yep. that's a real market and people want them. You know, it's not something that uh, the manufacturer just said one day, hey, let's do this and see if it works. There's, yeah, it's going sure. to be effective. Yeah. And it's also going to go, you think, in that like pre order, the pre order market, pre order uh, consumer have, like for us, we waited for four months for our EV. So, you know, I'm glad you said you ordered because I'm a big fan of ordering. You get exactly what you want. Wait a little bit, but uh, you get what you want to to the exact specs and colors. So I, I I I think this is a good model. We've seen that in the last year, year and a half, right? Yeah, yeah. I think it. I think it will be. And also, it's just a change in mindset. Like now, if you know that you're not going to be able to get the car you necessarily want right away, and you'll have to wait three months, like okay, so you shift your timeline. Right. Not right. The world. No, I think it's what? a good thing. Okay. I will say this, inventory levels are coming back up. So hopefully it's the right mix. So I think the manufacturers started to dial in what people actually want, which makes us way more efficient as dealers. Yeah, and well, that also goes back to what you said earlier, which is like inventory levels are going up. Dealers need to remember now, it's not just low supply, high demand, right? So there's the trainings coming back, the negotiations coming back, like get, make sure that your dealership staff is ready for that challenge, especially if they just started selling at a dealer in the, for the last two years, like they probably think it's like freaking the easiest thing in the world because it's like, you want to come? Sure. We'll give it to you for 10,000 above MSRP. Yeah, not, no more. I, I, I actually, look, I prefer this. I prefer the trained professionalism, the volume selling, the, you know, interaction with the consumer, not just the phone call. I, I think it's going to get exciting. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we'll have you back in six months. We'll have to see how it's going. And we'll yes, make it true. Thank you so much for joining us. Any any last thoughts before that you want to share with our uh, listeners before we sign off here? No, just keep growing, be progressive, be positive, and things aren't bad. Things are great. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And if you like this episode, Inside Auto Podcast, you can find all of our episodes on insideautopodcast.com and all your favorite streaming outlets. Thank you again, Eric. Thanks for listening to Inside Auto Podcast. Check out our other episodes with top entrepreneurs and industry leaders.